We can use our common sense and we can look at the available evidence and we can arrive at a plausible conclusion. And I think the most plausible con conclusion with this story is that it is a hoax. It is, a, it is fake. Millette says that he was walking back uh, from a Subway restaurant at 2 a.m. in Chicago in the middle of winter, and it was sub-zero temperatures, uh, but he was going for a nice walk back from Subway, and he was suddenly attacked by two racist assailants, and he says that they assaulted him, they poured a mysterious chemical on him that apparently was bleach, they tied a rope around his neck, and they shouted, this is MAGA country, um, along with anti-black and anti-gay slurs. Smollett says that he fought, fought off his assailants and he was able to attack, um, able to get away from the attack. And impressively, he made it home with his Subway sandwich, his tuna sandwich still intact. And he still had his, the, the rope that they put around his neck. He still had it. He was wearing it around his neck like a necktie. Eventually, he called the police, although according to the police report, he was hesitant, hesitant to call them. But he did call them. And eventually, he went to the hospital. and He, he took a selfie in the hospital bed which is when everyone found out about this. And um, the selfie shows a small scratch under his eye, but not much else in the way of bodily injury. Now, there are many, way, many reasons to doubt this story. Number one, I think the first reason is just that it's absurd. It just, it's, it's a crazy story. Second thing is the video footage doesn't support the claim uh, that he's talking about. P police have been able to piece together most of his jaunt to and from Starbucks or a Subway and through security camera footage, because it's a big city and there are security cameras everywhere, they, they, there's only a 60-second gap that they can't see. So there's no footage of the attack, and there's no footage of the assailants either. Third thing is um, Smollett has not been eager to help the investigation, which is suspicious. He didn't want to hand over his phone records or his phone. Finally, he did hand, hand over his phone records after about two weeks of stonewalling them. But they were heavily redacted, so redacted as to be useless. Fourth thing is Smollett is not acting like the victim of a vicious beating. Just a couple of days after suffering, he says, bruised ribs. He was on stage singing and dancing and not showing any sign of physical impairment whatsoever, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you've ever bruised your ribs before. Now, broken ribs, okay, it's not as bad as a broken rib. But if you've ever, if you've ever bruised your rib before, you know that it hurts to breathe or move. And then the fifth thing is that his neighbors don't even believe him. His, his neighbors have come out and said that, um, in fact, quoting one of his neighbors, Agent Muhammad, who lives in the same building as uh, the supposed victim, told the New York Post, I don't believe it, not around here. Half the people are gay and the other half are black. So it's just, that's significant because if this, it, look, if his neighbors came out and said, yeah, this kind of stuff happens all the time, that would be kind of strange that it's the first time we're hearing of it. But if, if, if the neighbors were saying that, then I would say, okay, well, okay, well, th th that's uh, the plausibility dial just ticked up a few notches then in that case. But no, they're saying the opposite. They're saying you know, this kind of stuff never happens. All we can do is just use our, our heads and decide if this seems like something that actually happened, even if we can't totally disprove it. As I said, it's hard to disprove anything. We can't, there have been many alien abduction stories that people have claimed over the years and we can't really disprove any of those alien abduction stories. If some guy says that he was uh, getting out of his pickup truck one night, heading, heading to his house and he was abducted by an alien, there, we can't really disprove it. it. It could have happened, but again, we can use our heads and look at the evidence and decide whether or not it's plausible. But here's the thing. Okay. So that's that, the, the specifics of that case. Um, Hate crime hoaxes are pretty common. And, th and that's the other thing we have to weigh here with this case. We know that hate crime hoaxes happen. We know that that's a, a thing that happens. But two Trump supporting racists wielding bleach and a rope in the middle of the downtown Chicago in 2019, uh, we don't know of anything like that happening. So that's something that's completely unknown versus the other explanation, which is a hate crime hoax. Well, that kind of stuff happens all the time.